In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of SPSS in order to generate Kaplan Meier survival curves and to carry out the log rank test in order to compare uh, two, two groups in terms of survival times. So, uh, the demonstration uh, that we have right here, the data and the example come from Luke and Homan's uh, Psych Bulletin article from 1998. It's a pedagogical article where they uh, discuss uh, various approaches to survival analysis and uh, the approaches demonstrated here are, are actually coming from uh, that demonstration. So um, what we have as a circumstance or the scenario is that uh, we have a group of individuals um, who had uh, either undergone alcohol detoxification which uh, that would be coded zero on the group variable or some other type of uh, treatment that was not just simply a detoxification approach which is coded one and uh, what we were looking at is to see um, essentially survival times until a point at which a terminal event occurred that terminal event being relapse so the event variable is actually our um, censoring variable where uh, essentially a value of one reflects a case that um, relapsed uh, during the observation period a value of zero actually represents a case that is censored. Um, and a censored case just basically means that uh, during the observation period um, there was no, ob no uh, observation of the terminal event actually occurring. And um, what, what happens is, is that we don't know that uh, by the end of the observation period whether uh, a given case uh, would relapse or not. Um, all we know is that by the end of the um, study period that uh, the case had not relapsed. So uh, essentially a censored case is one in which the target event or the terminal event was not observed during the observation period. Now you'll see too that we have the variable weeks in the data and so this is weeks following uh, release from uh, the treatment uh, approaches uh, either the detox or the other uh, treatment. So you can see right here that uh, essentially uh, the first person in the data set, this person is in the detox group which is coded zero, that person uh, exhibited a relapse by the end of week one. Person two exhibited a relapse uh, by the end of week one as well and so these two individuals were in the detox group. So all these folks are in the detox group and then you have the uh, other treatment alternative uh, represented below. You can see that person uh, seven right here uh, relapsed at week 27. Uh, then you can see that uh, you know person 12 in the detox group relapsed at uh, week 25. Uh, you'll notice that uh, we have uh, these individuals right here. Uh, all of these cases are censored. They're right censored at 30 weeks, meaning that by the end of the 30 week observation period they had not been observed to relapse. So then when we scroll down you can also see that um, among uh, the uh, uh, the alternative treatment approaches, you know, all of these cases uh, right here are in that group, and you can see that you know we have all of these individuals uh, exhibited a relapse, and then this person right here was uh, censored as well as all of these individuals. So you'll see that uh, among the uh, all the other treatment group uh, that uh, we had uh, this individual right here relapsed uh, by the end of week two. This person relapsed. Uh, by the end of uh, week five, there's that person, and so forth. And then down here you'll see that um, a case uh, at, at uh, week 19, they are censored. And the reason why, we don't really know, except that uh, obviously uh, if they're censored, that means that uh, that case was lost from the observation period. In other words, um, we, you know, we were able to observe this uh, individual uh, individual 31 all the way up uh, to week 19 but then during week 19 that observation was lost so we don't know whether or not that individual uh, relapsed uh, after uh, uh, our observations of that person uh, but you know the nice thing about um, survival analysis is that it does allow us to to um, you know maximize the information that we have uh, by um, uh, uh, with the uh, information from uh, the cases up until a point at which they might be censored or at least have a, been observed to um, uh, demonstrate the terminal event. Then all of these individuals right here, cases uh, 35 through 40, all of them made it to week 30 without 
um, relapsing. So all of these individuals were right censored as well. So let's run our analysis using uh, the Kaplan-Meier and log rank test. So we're going to go to an analyze survival and then Kaplan-Meier. We'll move weeks over to the time variable. The uh, censoring variable event, we're going to move to status. We'll click on define event and we'll code it, give it a value of 1 indicating that the event has occurred. Next we'll move the group variable over to the factor box. We'll click on compare factor and we're going to ask for the log rank test as well. So then we'll click on options and to get a, a visual of the uh, survival curves, we're going to click on survival here, click on continue and on OK. So you'll see first off that we get a survival table and in this table we have, you know, there's our first group and our second group and these are the observations within each of the two groups and you can see that we have uh, time which is essential and then status. So the status is representing whether or not the terminal event was observed uh, during the observation period for a given case. So you can, and then time is reflecting um, essentially the time until um, the, you know, uh, a relapse was observed or a case was uh, considered censored. So you can see again there's, um, you know, case one in the detox group uh, relapsed uh, at week one, case two uh, relapsed at week one, case three relapsed at week two, and so forth. And then here are cases 18 to 20. Uh, all of these cases relapsed, uh, excuse me, uh, were censored uh, by week 30 or the end of week 30. Um, so there you go. So you can also see that we have a column for cumulative proportion surviving at the time. So that's the proportion of um, in, in this case, the proportion of the sample from each group uh, surviving um, up to a given uh, time point. So you can see that uh, the proportion uh, by the end of week one is 0.9, and that's because we lost uh, two uh, observations, these two observations out of the 20 that were in the, the first group. So that's leaving us with 90% of, um, of um, the detox group that's surviving. Then uh, by the end of uh, week two right here, you can see that we have um, uh, the loss of another case. So that's leaving 85% of, um, of the detox group and then, and then so forth. So then you can see all the way down here at um, uh, you know, the end of week uh, 28 right here, you can see that we, we have 15% of, uh, of the detox group that's remaining. When we scroll down a little bit further, you can see uh, in the treatment, you can see uh, the same general uh, situation occurring. You'll notice that right here we do have uh, that censored case. So, um, you know, essentially um, uh, the the values in are kind of adjusting for this uh, censored uh, uh, that, uh, case right here. So next, let's scroll down to means and medians uh, for the survival time. So uh, in their article, uh, Luke and Homan uh, suggest uh, that really when it comes to reporting on sort of um, kind of the, an average um, uh, survival time or you know, making comparisons and so forth, we should also be mainly focusing in on the median um, rather than the mean. But we're going to, um, we'll, we'll kind of talk briefly about both. So th the median uh, survival time would be uh, that time, in, in, in this case in weeks, uh, where 50% of the um, sample for a given group is, uh, um, you know, has already exhibited uh, the terminal event. So the remaining 50% um, is has survived to that point. So you can see that for the d detox group right here, uh, that the median survival time was nine uh, or nine weeks, whereas the treatment group the median was 17. If you look down here at uh, the survival. Um, uh, plot right here, table uh, um, figure right here. You can see that uh, cumulative survival. We can you can see right here 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Uh, so the median, uh, you know, basically is going to represent the 50th percentile. So we're just I'm just going to make a little mark right here for right now. Notice too that we have the blue line is representing the detox group and the green line is representing the uh, treatment group or the non-detox. You can also see a little plus right here and a little plus right here, which appears right here, here, and here. And that's just signifying that we had cases that were censored um, at those points. So, you know, looking at, um, you know, the medians, essentially the median for the detox group, we can just kind of draw a line 
uh, horizontally over um, to this point right here and then draw vertically down and you can see that that occurs uh, at about nine weeks so that's the median for the detox group if we want to look at the median for uh, the treatment group uh, we can just kind of carry this on over and then draw down and you can see that that occurs right around um, 17 weeks so you can see then that uh, there looks to be a difference uh, essentially you know with the blue uh, uh, line right here you can you can tell that uh, essentially um, that uh, you know as the weeks progress you can see you know that drop in the cumulative uh, um, percentage or cumulative proportion of uh, the samples uh, in that group that's surviving so you can see that uh, that um, the survival rates are, are lower than what you have in terms of the uh, treatment group. Now if we want to compare, uh, oh by the way also if we wanted to look at the means you can see this is the mean uh, for the detox group and the treatment group. So the mean for the detox group uh, uh, the mean number of weeks was 13 point roughly 13 and a half uh, weeks whereas the treatment group uh, it was roughly 19 weeks. Um, now, if we want to compare the two groups in terms of their, um, their survival rates, you can uh, look down here. We have the log rank test. So it's a chi-square test. Uh, you have a one degree of freedom right here in this particular case. And this is the p-value. So you're just going to compare this against uh, whatever the, the um, alpha thresh threshold that you have. Uh, conventional alpha is 0.05. So uh, using that threshold, we would say that um, uh, you know, basically, if the p-value is greater than than uh, our alpha, then we maintain the null and, con and conclude that there's no difference in uh, survival times between the two groups. If it's less than or equal to 0.05, then we would reject the null and in infer that there is a difference in survival times. And so, you can see right here, the p-value was greater than 0.05. It's 0.112. So we would. Um, Despite you know the descriptive evidence that um, you know of differences in the median survival times, it appears that there's no significant difference uh, between the two groups.